and I'll just great. Yeah, so I'll just get right into it when it hits one o'clock. Okay, it's one. So hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Dave Mellert. And I work in research IT at the Jackson Laboratory. So we have a, a whole branch of IT dedicated to providing uh, hardware and software support for our researchers. Um, and I am, uh, I manage a group which is responsible for pretty much everything related to image data management and analysis. Um, so I was uh, asked to come up with a demo for today. So I thought I would talk a little bit about some of the tools that we use to manage Omero at JAX. Let me share my screen. So I will start by showing you a few, is this sharing the correct screen? No, it's not. There we are. Can you all see a br my browser? Yep. Okay, it's not highlighting for whatever reason, but that's all right. So I'll start by showing a few repositories here uh, that might be of interest to you. So pretty much um, all of the major scripts that we use for managing imports um, and syncing up Omero with um, other data management platforms at JAX um, can be found at this URL. And if I can find the chat, I can drop it in there. Um, chat. There we are. Okay. So um, one of our flash talks kind of talks about how we um, handle imports uh, for Omero, and that's all sort of orchestrated by scripts in this library. Um, we made it public because there was some interest um, from the image.sc boards and how we do things. I warn you, this is not uh, terribly well documented at the moment. Uh, it's really for internal use. We wanted to, to share it with people. Um, but the reason why I bring this up is because in the course of putting uh, this all together, uh, we came up with a bunch of convenience functions and, and sort of shortcuts and tricks in Python uh, for working with Omero. And then uh, Eric Rodomero, who I uh, work with at JAX, um, said, hey, why don't we make a Python package out of this and make it available to the community? So I thought, hey, that's a great idea. Um, so that's Easy Omero, uh, so named because we felt like it made our Python Omero experience a little bit easier. Um, and I will kind of focus on this in the demo today. Um, but I want to start out with the caveat of Everything I'm showing you today is meant to supplement what you get with the um, Blitz, the, the Python uh, API, uh, gate, Blitz Gateway API. So, for example, we don't do anything like return image objects or anything like that because you can get an image object from Omero very easily using the uh, using Omero Pi. So. Um, this is all just going to be stuff that, that we've come up with to make things easier. So I will copy this. Uh, and then finally, the demo material today, I created a third repo for this here. All right, so I will jump right into it. Um, it's totally cool if this is conversational. If anyone wants to stop me at any time to ask questions, please do. Uh, Okay, so first let me talk a little bit about uh, the environment I'm working in uh, today. So I'm going to be connecting to our JAX production server, which is maybe a bit risky, but we'll see what happens. Um, so you won't be able to follow along exactly, but uh, I mean, the concepts here are all, are all pretty generic. So I think you could uh, translate to your own environment. Um, so I'm going to be using Jupyter Lab. Uh, which is not something I'm usually doing, but I thought it would be a little bit easier to present. I spend a lot of time working in a Python shell, just an IPython shell, um, maybe because I'm weird, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, a lot of what you see uh, comes from me saying, boy, I hate doing it this way. When I'm in a Python shell, I'd rather just have a simple 
a function that does X, Y, Z. Okay. Um, I'm using a conda environment here. It just has Python 3.7. Why 3.7? I don't know. Easy Omero works with 3.6 and up. Um, Easy Omero is installable via pip. So that's a pip install. And then all the dependencies, including Omero Pi, are automatically installed. Um, and then matplotlib for, for visualization. Is this text going to be large enough for everyone? Please speak up. Yeah, that's good, yeah. OK. So um, all right, so easy Amero. So when we made this thing public, actually before that, we tried to do a really nice job of um, with documentation. So in fact, if you are go to the repository, you can see we have a very sort of bare bones um, web documentation that you can use. Um, but these are all sort of auto documentation from the doc strings and the functions. So, uh, so the first function I'll show you, because this is something that uh, I wanted for a long time was an easy way to connect to Omero. So this thing, uh, there's a lot going on with this connect function. Uh, so I'll walk you through it step by step. Uh, but yeah, um, so pretty much every function has a doc string that looks like this. This would look familiar to you if you're used to uh, like NumPy or scikit-image, um, these, these, these formats for doc strings. OK. so. Typically, um, you know, if you want to create a connection object, you would use uh, the Blitz Gateway function. So, Easy Omero at a very basic level just kind of mirrors that. All right, so you can create a connection with parameters. That should be pretty familiar. So here, just user group post. Is our internal server. Okay, so um, this will create a connection. You'll notice I didn't put in a password. I have it prompting me for a password. This is just using git pass um, from from. Uh, Python. So I hate typing my password in clear text anywhere, even if it's my own personal scripts, because I invariably put these things and commit them to a repository or do something like that. So um, this connection function will force you to enter your password a different way. Um, and it creates the connection right away. So if I do something like, let's see. Another easy Amero function here, print groups. So all of these functions, after you create the connection object, take the connection as the first parameter. All right, so here's just to show you that I'm connected, and then here's all the groups and showing you which groups I'm a member of, which groups I'm the owner of. Okay, so let's close that. Um, I'm going to run this again with a mistake, just to show you what happens. OK, so if you put in the wrong settings, you get an error right away. I don't know if you guys have experienced this, but you don't necessarily get an easy to parse error message if you make a mistake when you're putting in your connection parameters. So that's another uh, using the Blitz Gateway object. So this is another nice little We'll check. Okay. All right. So what I really uh, wanted, though, was a function that would give me a bunch of different ways to connect. Okay. So you can always. Um, so another thing you can do is just run this function with no parameters at all, and it will prompt you for everything if it has no other way of getting your connection parameters. So I'll talk about that in a second. 
Um, so here now, it's just going to prompt me for connection parameters. Right, so there's connection. OK. But it only prompts if it can't find connection parameters in two uh, other ways. So one is you can store parameters in a config file, um, either in a directory that you specify or in your home directory. So you can store connection parameters using this function, store connection parameters. And it gives you the same walkthrough here. So. And it tells you it's now saved a little config file. Now I can actually just connect. And of course, it prompts me for my password. Why? Because I don't want to store my password in, in the config file. <laughs> And if you have already a nice config file that you have some information, will will you be able, are you able to pass a file to connect or and you will pass that file? So, so yeah, so you can create and point to a separate config file. Um, if the config file already exists, it will ask you if you want to replace it, those sorts of things. Okay. Is that the question? Or? Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, if, if you had, you know, in the ice config, you can, you could potentially put some information like the host, etc. So if it was uh, that specific file, or you only consider the dot uh, easy Omero file as a, I see. as a reference file. Uh, at the moment, no. Um, but it would be straightforward to set up like, mm. Uh, no, no, it, it, it's you know, no yeah. is a fine answer. If it's only this is at the, at the moment, that's, that's yeah, cool. yeah. So part of this is, you know, this is something that we kind of just recently made public. If you guys think this sort of thing is cool, I encourage you to drop into the repo, leave issues, feedback, or you can give us feedback here. So um, this is all sort of built out of our experience working working with the API. So, okay. So the one last thing, which I think is going to tie, tie this all together is um, if you don't have the config file, um, you can also pass parameters through environment variables. So I'm going to quickly remove that config file. Okay, so this is just a little bit of Jupyter magic. Um, I wouldn't actually do this in a production context, but a different group. All right, so we'll do those two. Okay, so now So now you'll see I'll get prompted through all the information that's missing, but it will skip over user and group because those exist in as uh, environment variables. Okay. So what's the point of all this? So now when I write a script, I can just drop drop easyomero.connect in the script. Okay. If I'm delivering the script to one of our users who maybe wants to use it to do something with images. It could go in and they could put information into the parameters directly if they wanted to, or they could use either of these other methods for logging into a mirror when they run the script uh, on their on their side. Um, and then in our production environment, we're always going to have that config file. Um, and then the password stored uh, as an environment variable. Okay, so that's the connection. All right, actually I should have kept that open, but uh, move that back to the top of the screen. Okay, so let's get a new connection here. 
just going to copy and paste. Okay, so I showed you that we have like this print function to print groups. So we have others, so print projects, for example. So this will show me all of the projects in my group, Research IT. Um, there's print data sets, where you can give it now a project, and it's just the ID. So another thing with Easy Amero is we're usually always working with IDs. So in this particular test uh, project, I just have one data set. Okay, and then you can grab, say, image IDs from that data set. So here we have get image IDs. I have two images, right? So if you look in a Mero web, you can see there's my project and data set and there's my images. So that's, you know, I always wanted a simple way to browse around when I'm in the shell rather than going, looking back and forth with my browser. So this is useful for that. Okay, um, now grabbing image data. The, I, the, Method for grabbing pixels uh, through the um, standard API can be a bit verbose. Um, I think it's pretty powerful, uh, but sometimes I just want to grab an image. So we have get image. And I'm going to show you now something I hate, but which is kind of a legacy of how this whole thing began is it's actually going to return the image object along with my image pixels. <laughs> which I'm pretty sure this is, this is going to change in the near future, but. Uh, so I will take a look at, uh, see, 24901. Hopefully this doesn't take too long. <laughs> okay. So now you'll see it returned a five dimensional array. Um, I have to warn you that um, I'm returning these in the uh, sort of scikit image format. So this is TZYXC, because that is just sort of more friendly in the NumPy world. Uh, for example, you can do oh, I have to import NumPy. Now, so I'm going to visualize this image. All right, so I could just visualize this directly. You don't get any weird um, transpose, which happens if you aren't careful how you pull pixels out of Omero, because Omero tends to want things to be X, Y, Z, C, T. Um, so you can see here's my image. Different exposure settings, but there we have it. Um, you can also uh, decide not to return pixels, which is the silliest thing in the world, which is why I need to completely redo this whole function. <laughs> <laughs> but also choose like start coordinates, the length of a tile that you want to grab, uh, whether you want your array in the sort of Omero XYZ CT form. Um, if you try to grab a tile that goes outside of the image bounds, whether you want to pad it uh, and, and so on. So um, if, uh, 
you can take a look at what's going on under the hood for this. Um, but I think if any of you have tried to grab uh, pixels through the standard API before, it's um, a little, little, little bit of typing. Okay. So that is browsing data. Um, we also have functions to put data back into Amero, right? So if I want to create a project, we have post project. So, and this will return the ID of the project that it creates. So we'll call this one OME demo. And give it a description. Okay, so I have a new project with the ID 914. All right, here it is. Um, I can create a data set, kind of the same idea. Uh, I will skip the description. Um, all right, so I'm going to put this new data set in the project that I just created. So you have a new data set, 2699. Here's a new data set. So pretty simple, but it does some things that would otherwise take a few lines of, of code. Uh, you can also put push images back. So um, let's see here. I'm just going to crop my image. All right. So this is just an image crop. So now I'm going to uh, put this back to Amero. Um, so we have a post image. The post image wants images in XYZ CT format. So let's see. I am going to use NumPy to do some rearranging here. So I want to add a couple of axes <laughs> and then swap the first and second axis. This may not be the most efficient way to do this, but so this is now XYZCT. You can add parameters like the name of the image, whether you want to copy over metadata from another image. Well, let's see. I don't think there's any interesting metadata to copy over on this one because it's just a TIFF, but All right, so you can do that. Ah, you need an image name. Okay. Uh, let's tell it to go into our data set as well. All right. So that should work. Never mind this warning. This warning was for our internal use. We do almost all of our imports using uh, symlinking, the in place imports. So this is just reminding people that if you post an image, back to Omero, it's not going to be managed under our sort of standard uh, system. There's my cropped image. Okay, last bit that I wanted to show was map annotations. So we use map annotations extensively at JAX. 
Um, and they sort of, you know, because they're key value pairs, you can work with them like dictionaries for the most part. So I will create a very simple annotation here. Uh, that's a little boring. Let's say antibody. Okay, and um, we always include a namespace as well. So let's see. Then, as with the other post functions, it's going to return the ID of the object that it creates. So. Now here, because map annotations can be attached to images, data sets, projects, whatever, you still have to tell it what kind of object you want to attach it to. Um, provide the ID. Give it the dictionary that you are using the namespace, and that should be it. So there's our new map annotation. There's our new map annotation. There's also a put that I was going to show you where you could edit a map annotation that already exists. We don't use that one super frequently. Um, but I guess I will leave the last four minutes for any questions here. Hope I didn't blow through that uh, too quickly, but as you can see, pretty, pretty simple. It's really just saving keystrokes um, and trying to make things a little bit easier. When we are doing stuff that needs to be like performant or complicated, we are using the Blitz Gateway stuff, the, the Omero Pi API. Um, that's all. Can I just been just jump in real quick just to say that uh, first thank thank uh, Julio for his ROI oh, contributions. Yeah. Uh, second, say that we are very open to PR. So if you have an idea of something you would like to see in this, feel free to hack something together, open a PR. We can talk about it, and that's it. Yes, we now have the ability to post um, ROIs, which is. Awesome. Thank you, Julio, for that. Um, I just, we haven't released it yet because there's a few other things that we have going in the repo. Uh, but that's yeah. great. My pleasure. So I'm actually looking forward because I'm always feeling around with uh, my own convenience functions. And it's going to be great to do pip install with your Maron and just use it. There's a yeah. question from Nico first and Damir after for you dave nico okay thanks um just just a quick question about the the post image that you showed uh, as one of the last steps um i mean i assume the 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 stuff that you put back ends up in the binary repository in the managed repository just as you, as if you were running it through an amero import is that true the image data goes into pixels I think is the create create image method, create image sequence that you're probably using. So yeah. that will not be uh, in the managed okay. repository. Okay, it's not right. in the managed repository. It's okay, not. so that explains the second half of my question: why there is an issue with LNS or even yes. LN? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. Yeah. So this is not ending up as a file on on disk as we know it from when we're on running Okay. Thanks. Exactly. Yeah. So Great the, job. very nice. Very nice. Really. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, you know, the way that we are handling like archiving and backs up, backups and all these sorts of things um, for anything that's imported through soft linking that kind of has its own backup system and then everything else just gets snapshots and we have some cross site replication going on. So I would consider the our sort of standard imports are safer than stuff that goes in through the post image method, although they both should be pretty safe. Mm -hmm. 
It would be actually interesting to learn about uh, how you're operating the the, the the space level things, like you know, system uh, stuff as well. But uh, that's yeah, that absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. I, I had a, a difficult time putting together a demo for I all bet. of that on short notice because we have a lot of stuff going on. Uh, you can take a look at the Jack Somero utils scripts again. I will. We never really wrote them to be easily digestible. I think we, we probably need to do that. Um, you know, I don't, it's not terribly complicated code. But there's crazy stuff that we have to do to make everything work, like switch between different users and move data across storage platforms and, and all sorts of weird things. Uh, so Eric maybe, Romero figured a lot of that out. <laughs> so hats off to him. <laughs> maybe Damir, before we get kicked out of the room. <laughs> yeah, Is that going to happen any minute now? <laughs> A very quick one. Uh, how how friendly are are your tools to um, tiled pyramided uh, images as they are stored? Yeah. So I, I you know I saw you asked about this on the uh, forums. Um, yeah. So we aren't grabbing. It, it's always going to be the highest resolution. If you want the down sampled pyramid levels, you because we're just using the Blitz Gateway API under the hood for that. Um, you'd have to use the other methods that I think we'll uh, refer to. Uh, and yeah. we, haven't, we haven't implemented that. I mean, I think we should, but we just, yeah, haven't gotten there. I, have, um, yeah. I had some issues with that and I, I, I hacked some, some modifications of the standard uh, API call to deal with large images that were not possible to import as non array. So you have to dive and so on and so forth. I mean, a, key, a few corner cases, I can look into that. So thanks again, Dave, because we're going to be kicked yep. out in 20 seconds. I'm going to stop seconds. the recording <laughs> and that was great. And yeah.